She's the world's leading lady of dance, movies, music, and fashion. A Puerto Rican powerhouse from the Bronx. They came from the Bronx, Cardi from the Po, and Jenny from the Bad Bunny Middle. Who hustled her way to superstardom. It's all I wanted to do. It was almost like nobody was going to hold me back from doing it, or trying it at least. Coming up next, J-Lo. My life, it was fast and furious. And I felt like, yeah, I'm happy that I'm doing this. I really just wanted to sing songs and make music, and I was doing that. Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer Lopez. But life in the public eye led to a private struggle. I got knocked down after I got famous. Then people start trying to tear you down. Well, she really can't sing, and she really can't act, and she really wasn't that good in that, or, you know. And they just obliterate you, obliterate you. And that's when your confidence really takes a hit. No matter how many hit movies you had, and millions and millions of records you sold, there was always this stigma attached to you. That was probably the most anxiety-provoking moment of my life. Jennifer Lopez! Miss Jennifer Lopez! Jennifer Lopez. Instead of retreating, she learned from her low points and continues to soar during her second act. You gotta tap into the positive voice and go, wait a minute. I'm here for a reason. I have worth. I have value. I belong here. And then it's like the second act. Now we take a look at the moments that changed her life. My life went into fast motion. Defined her career. Success felt like a lot of work. Luckily, I love work. And made her who she is. I just was on my own ride. This is Jennifer Lopez, The Ride. So I know where I came from. <laughs> what can we do for you? On December 21st, 2018, J-Lo's 35th film, Second Act, was released in theaters worldwide. The romantic comedy explores themes that hit home for the veteran actress, personal reinvention through ambition and belief. Wow, this is my office? Second Act is a film about a woman named Maya who works in kind of like a big box store, been the manager there for 15 years, and is up for a managerial position. And she gets passed over basically by somebody much younger with a better education. And she just thinks, you know what, maybe this is where I belong. Maybe I'm not supposed to have more. I don't know why I have this feeling inside of me, this ambition inside of me, but maybe when life tells you over and over again, this is who you are, then maybe you need to start believing it. And she's about to give up. I couldn't fight anymore. And then her life takes a turn. So lady call for you. Something about a job interview? Oh my God, Franklin and Clark? The role of Maya has a personal connection to Jennifer's own life and career. Despite being a powerhouse in the world of film, music, television, and fashion, at times she's lacked confidence, and it was only through her failures that she was able to truly understand self-love. There is not a successful person where failure is not a huge part of what they've been through, personally and professionally. You have to, before you figure it out. The only thing with a prayer I'm stopping you is you. The movie is really about realizing that the mistakes that you've made in the past, where you think you don't deserve anything better, which is what really holds you back, what's going on in your mind, are the things that lead you down the path of your purpose. It's not easy getting a job for a woman your age. <gasps> Watch me. Jennifer Lopez was born and raised in the Bronx, New York. Her Puerto Rican family barely made ends meet. But along with her two sisters, she was always encouraged to perform. 
She began taking singing and dancing lessons at the age of four and instantly knew what she wanted out of life. I knew from a very young age, maybe like four years old, five years old, that I wanted to sing and dance and act like I knew that. And then as I got older and into my preteen and teenage years, I had a love of performing. And by the time I was supposed to go into college, I told my mom and dad that I was gonna not go to college and pursue show business. And being in the Bronx, that didn't go over very well because we knew nobody in the business. We had no connections. And so it was a very far-fetched dream for them. And they were really worried, like, what is our daughter gonna do? And where is this gonna lead her? And at the end of the day, I just had to kind of go off on my own and do it. At the age of 17, Jennifer left her family in the Bronx and moved to Manhattan to follow her dreams of becoming a big-time entertainer. Despite the risky move, she was absolutely certain that she was destined for greatness. I think I had a really stupid confidence right from the beginning. Should I teach somebody how to hop the train? Or she gotta look around? No, I'm coming back! I'm coming back, it's just a joke! I don't know, it was even more like ignorance. <laughs> like I had such a beautiful, youthful ignorance of like, nothing can stop me, I can do whatever I want and just going for it and going for it. It's all I wanted to do. It wasn't scary for me. It was almost like nobody was gonna hold me back from doing it, or trying it at least. I'm a simple Puerto Rican girl from the Bronx who just come down to Manhattan with all my big dreams and just try to make them come true. I just took it day by day, step by step, you know, with the fundamentals of I'm gonna be a great dancer first, and learning that. And then I'm gonna be a great actress, and then learning that. And I'm gonna be a singer, and learning that. Just finding my way and taking the path where it led me. In the early 90s, Jennifer's profile was rising thanks to being a fly girl on the successful comedy series In Living Color. <laughs> After two years on the show, she was hired as a dancer for a tour with Janet Jackson, but she left the job to focus on acting. I always wanted to sing, dance, and act. That was always part of the plan. There was never a moment where I was just going to be a dancer. I just wanted to do it all, not wanting to be in a box ever. And after a few years sharpening her skills, Jennifer made her way onto the silver screen in 1995. My first movie was a small independent movie called Mi Familia, My Family, with a bunch of Latin actors. I was just very pleased to be able to work. Like, I was happy that I was a working actress and people could see that I had chops. And so after Mi Familia, I was just like, okay, what's gonna be my next thing? I need, I need to audition, I need to get into the next movie. And luckily, I kept going. Two years after her film debut, Jennifer was offered an audition for the lead role on the highly anticipated biopic, Selena, which told the life story of the late Latin singer. In my mind, there was never any question that I was gonna be a leading lady. And so they said, this is gonna be a big movie, you should audition for this. They did this big casting through Chicago, Mexico City, LA, all over to find somebody to play Selena, and I got the part. Jennifer's portrayal of Selena made her the highest paid Latina actress in history. The film was a huge success, and suddenly, she was a household name. I like any good, strong woman role, and it doesn't have to be sexy, or and it doesn't have to be, you know, demure, it doesn't have to be anything, it just has to be a great role. For the confident young star, all was going to plan. From there, I just went on to do movies, movies, movies. Success felt like a lot of work. Set. Luckily, I love work. I felt really grateful. Look at my face. Coming up, Jennifer builds her career with a bold new direction. I told my manager at the time that I wanted to make a record. And he was like, are you kidding me? You're like one of the up and coming actresses in Hollywood right now. Like, why would you do that? And I was like, nobody could tell me that I wasn't gonna do that. 
I knew that I was gonna be a recording artist and I was gonna make music and I was gonna sing and dance on stage all over the world. And later, J-Lo's talent is put to the test. When you start having the success, Coming up next, J -Lo. then the lens gets on you. Then they're like, who is this? Like at first we we're like, nice new girl. And then after you start having a string of success, people go, wait a minute. Does she deserve this success? Let's see. Okay, let's roll tape and action. By 1998, Jennifer Lopez was one of the biggest movie stars in the world. But she already had her sights on making it in the music industry. Right at the beginning of my career, when I was acting and it was going so well, I had done Out of Sight, I had done Selena, I had done movies with Jack Nicholson and Francis Ford Coppola, and I, I was just rolling as an actress. And then I told my manager at the time that I wanted to make a record. And he was like, are you kidding me? You're like one of the up and coming actresses in Hollywood right now. Like, why would you do that? And I was like, because that's part of who I am. Nobody could tell me that I wasn't gonna do that. I knew that I was gonna be a recording artist. I was gonna make music and I was gonna sing and dance on stage all over the world. That's what it was gonna be. Jennifer fired her manager and financed her own demo, which landed on the desk of the head of Sony Music, Tommy Mottola. He quickly gave her a deal, and she hit the studio to record her debut album, On The Six. When I was making On The Six, it was my first time ever in a studio. I had never really done a ton of singing before, except in like school plays and Broadway review shows and things like that, but never properly in a studio, writing songs, picking music, and recording vocals. Tommy Mottola just threw me right in. Now if I give you me, this is how it's got to be. First of all, I won't take you cheating on me. All of a sudden, it came on the radio, and I was like, oh my god, that's my song. My song is playing on the radio. If you had my love and I gave you all my trust, just the craziest feeling in the world. Released in May of 1999, On The Six was an instant hit. Fueled by the singles If You Had My Love and Waiting For Tonight, the album sold over 10 million worldwide. Coming up next, J Lo. Jennifer was now a triple threat entertainer, succeeding in the world of dance, film, and music. I just was on my own ride, you know, and I was on my own path. And I felt like, yeah, I'm happy that I'm doing this, and my record's out. For the single tape not number one, I just, you have to pinch me. I really just wanted to sing songs and make music, and I was doing that. And so when it came out, and it went right to number one. I didn't even celebrate that in the way that somebody who knows about the record business would celebrate it. Now, when I get a number one, I'm like, are we number one? Like, no, I feel too much. But back then, I was happy to have a record on the radio. And the winner is Jennifer Lopez. Pictures up. In 2001, Jennifer Lopez scored hit after hit at the box office. She also released her second album, J Lo. It hit the top 10 in over 19 countries, and her career went into overdrive. Here's the remix of J Lo. From there, my life was fast and furious after that. But despite continued success and praise from her fans, some critics weren't as kind. As much as she was being built up, many were trying to knock her down. I got knocked down after I got famous.
Once you're in the public eye and they can kind of take shots at you, then people start trying to tear you down. And go, well, she really can't sing, and she really can't act, and she really wasn't that good in that, or, you know, and they just obliterate you. It's just hard. There's a lot going on, a lot of people around all the time, and they all have something to say about you. Jennifer Lopez! Jennifer Lopez. When you start having success, then the lens gets on you. They're like, who is this? Like at first, they're like, nice, new girl. And then after you have start having a string of good things happen or, or success, people go, wait a minute. Does she deserve this success? She can't really sing like Aretha Franklin, so does she have any merit here? Then they started looking at everything I did. All of you brainiacs out there speculate that I was naked. It has a bathing suit thing underneath. No matter how many hit movies you had and how many millions and millions of records you sold, there was always this stigma attached. Eventually, Jennifer's doubters began to get inside her head, and the unshakable confidence she had was being tested. Wait a minute. I've sold millions of records, and I had tons of hit movies, and... Wait, I, I must be doing something good, right? Right? And it was like this battle inside my head of like, no, everybody says you suck. You know what I mean? And I'm like, but wait, everything's going good and they keep hiring you. Okay. And then it's like two voices in your head. That was probably the most anxiety provoking moment of my life or the where my confidence was shattered. In 2002, Jennifer Lopez released her most iconic track yet. Jenny from the Block was a reaffirmation of her Bronx girl roots. This song was kind of just letting people know, you know, that I'm just the same girl I was always. You know, I'm still the same person. I'm still Jenny from the Block from back in the Bronx, and and that's who I am, and that's who I'm always going to be. I'm still, I'm still Jenny from the Block. The song seemed almost too elementary to be as great as I now recognize it to be lyrically. You know what I mean? Because it really did capture how I felt about myself. In 2002, after more hit films, a third album, and a popular clothing line, the press could not get enough of Jennifer Lopez. It's been crazy, like a roller coaster ride. Whether they were praising her stardom, in this in, this is this is the moment they compare me to Venus de Milo. Isn't that cool? Or questioning her abilities, it does beat you down. I have insecurities, like anybody else. One thing was for sure: her image sold magazines, and she was constantly shadowed by the paparazzi. <laughs> It was a hard time. It was a really, really hard time. This was before social media. So this was like the social media of the time, except it was very one-sided. We couldn't say how we felt, or people couldn't get to know us in that way. It's like something happens to you, and it's like everybody thinks that they know what you're thinking or what he's thinking. and what's happening between you, and nobody knows. But when the tabloids were out and we were being hounded by paparazzi constantly, it was a really hard time. JLo's high-profile engagement to leading man Ben Affleck only added to the public interest for details of her private life. I remember being on the cover of those tabloids for two years straight, and it was brutal. You don't bargain for that side of it, but like I say, you learn how to deal with it. I think it, it absolutely contributed to the demise of our relationship and the love that we had. It was just, it was, there was so much judgment and pressure and scrutiny and opinions, and it was just a really, really hard thing to deal with. You can lay down at night and know what, what's right and what's wrong and what's true and what's not. And that has to be your peace of mind. I mean, people deal with a lot worse stuff in the world than that. But for that, for that moment, it was just, it was a hard thing. It was sad. Jennifer's wedding plans were called off, and although it was a tough breakup, J.Lo gained strength in the lessons she learned. Such a learning and growing experience. I'm kind of glad that I went through it. You're not quite the same person you were before. You had to tap into the positive voice and go, wait a minute, I'm here for a reason. I have worth, I have value, I belong here. And then it's like the second act. 
coming soon on Jennifer Lopez, The Ride. Arthur got his MBA from Duke. He's the best man for the job. No, sir. I am. J-Lo gets her groove back and enters her second act. The failures and the, the downs, like they say, are the things that help you get to now, where you feel like, I got this. I have to get this straight. Hey, look. The only thing with a prayer I'm stopping you is you. You just start understanding yourself, but without making the mistakes, without trying and falling flat on your fucking face, you're not ever gonna know that. Keep evolving, keep getting better, keep growing, keep challenging yourself, keep elevating. And, and that's definitely the beginning of the second act for me. The newest member of the Video Vanguard Award, Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> my own path and make my own rules. I just love what I do. You're amazing and I love you. Thank you. I love you.